Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden. We did a video last year about um, small deciduous um, trees for your garden and um, looking at all the lovely autumn colours and things that you can get from deciduous trees. But I thought it's also really useful to have evergreen trees in the garden because they're the sort of permanence of the garden. They provide structure all year round, long after the leaves have fallen off the deciduous trees. And I'm here today, not in our own garden at home, but in my mum and dad's garden. And this garden is made um, predominantly really of evergreen trees, a lot of conifers, um, got big cedars and very large trees that perhaps um, wouldn't be suitable for everyone's garden. But I thought in this video we'll look at um, different um, varieties of evergreen trees that are suitable for small gardens. I'm back now in my own garden and the leaves have long since fallen. We're now in the depths of winter and we did do a video on what makes a good winter garden and evergreen trees really form that structure that um, holds the garden together in the winter months. So in this video we're going to look at 10 of the best evergreen trees. All of them are AGM, have got AGM awards. You may have seen a little symbol on a plant label or when you search for a plant on the internet and it means that it has undergone trials often at Wisley and are judged by expert forums. The AGM is intended to help gardeners choose the best plants for all round garden use. The list currently includes more than 7,500 plants and they're all subject to regular review to ensure they still warrant their place, with some losing their place each year and new plants being added to that list. Plants that have an AGM are suitable for growing in the UK, but are also suitable for gardeners in Europe and North America with similar weather conditions. USDA plant hardiness zones 6 through 9. So the evergreens that I've got on this list are either trees that are naturally small and suited to a small garden, or else they're trees that, that may naturally grow quite big, but are suitable to be clipped. And clipping them would restrict their size and make sure that they fit in a smaller garden. Some of the trees I have growing in this garden, in our garden, and some of them I haven't, and they may be trees that I might consider growing in the future. So we'll just have a look at um, 10 of the, what I consider to be the best trees. This is not an exhausted list and there's probably many trees that I've missed, so I'd welcome any comments that you may have. It's really exciting planting any new tree, whether it be deciduous or evergreen. Um, but there's lots of things to consider because hopefully it will be around for quite a long time. And it's important to take your time and do a little bit of research to make sure you plant the right tree because there's nothing worse than having to remove a healthy tree because it's been planted in the wrong place. And the things that you need to consider, the first one probably is, um, do you like the look of the tree? Is it a tree that you, you're attracted to and you like? Um, then you perhaps need to consider what it looks like year round. So um, what is it like in all seasons, all times of the year? Um, is it good for wildlife? Lots of trees are very beneficial to insects and birds. And then consider the aspect that you're going to grow it in, um, whether it's exposed, if it's a windy site, if it's a coastal site. And um, think of your soil type. Is it sandy? Is it clay? Is it loam? All of these things need to be considered. Think too about the ultimate size of the tree. So if it's going to grow into a huge, huge tree, you've got to think about how the shadows fall. Will it cast shadow where you don't want it to? Um, and is it going to get too big for the site? It is worth thinking that some of the trees, as I've, I've mentioned on this list, can be pruned to, to a desirable size. And if you trim the um, branches of a tree, that will also curtail the root growth as well. And similarly, growing a tree in a pot will also give it a kind of bonsai effect and stop it getting too big. So that's also worth considering for um, smaller gardens too. If you're considering a deciduous tree, then follow the link to the video we did last autumn on deciduous trees. I've got some really lovely trees there that you might wish to consider. First on my list is Prunus lusitanica or Portuguese laurel. And this is probably one of my favourite evergreen trees that we've got growing in this garden. Prunus lusitanica angustifolia is an AGM awarded tree and is widely used for hedging, but also makes it a fine specimen tree and is a good choice for year round structure. It is prettier than common laurel and has these lovely red stems and narrower, dark, glossy and ovate green leaves, but it is just as durable. Growing as a tree, it remains small and has a good rounded habit. It can be left to grow naturally or it can be pruned into various shapes, from pyramids to domes, but they look particularly good when pruned into an umbrella shape as we have done in our garden. 
The small fragrant white flowers in racemes of 25 centimetres in length appear in late spring and these are followed by dark purple berries. This evergreen makes an attractive tree or hedge all year round. It also provides cover to many small birds and is ideal for gardens of all sizes. This tree will grow to 8 to 12 metres, 26 to 39 feet in 20 to 50 years with a spread of, of about 8 metres or 26 feet, but can also be pruned to a more desirable smaller size. Grow in any moist but well-drained, moderately fertile soil, but can also thrive in poor, shallow, chalky soils. This tree is drought resistant, grow in any aspect, north, south, east or west facing, grow in sun or partial shade, pruning group 8, prune to desired shape in late spring or early summer. Hardy H5, USDA hardiness 6 through 9. Next on my list is Osmanthus buckwoodii and this is just a small tree that I planted just quite recently really in the last year um, but this tree will grow big. Strictly speaking Osmanthus buckwoodii develops as a large shrub but its attributes are so appealing that it makes a really good small bushy tree. It remains small growing to just three to five meters in height and has a good rounded habit and can be left to grow naturally or it can be pruned into various shapes. The species is native to Asia and has attractive dark evergreen leaves but its main attributes are the highly scented tubular white flowers which appear in early summer and their perfume seems to fill the whole garden. The white of the flowers contrasts extremely well with the dark foliage and are followed by blue-black fruits. Osmanthus also makes a really great loose hedge and is suited to topiary too. If you want that beautiful multi-stem look then just strip out the leaves from the lower branches. This tree will grow to 2.5 to 4 metres or 8 to 13 feet in height and spread in 10 to 20 years. It makes a very nice multi-stem tree or hedge. Grow this tree close to paths to enjoy the stunning jasmine-like smell. It also looks really good growing in a pot. Grows in any pH, acid, alkaline or neutral. Grow in full sun or part shade. Grow in chalk, loam, clay or sand and prefers free draining but fertile soil. It's best planted in a relatively sheltered spot. Although it is hardy for the UK, cold east winds may give it a bit of a battering. Known for its slow growth, about 15 centimetres a year, means it's a low maintenance tree. Pruning group 8, trim after flowering to promote flowering the following year. Hardiness H3, USDA hardiness 7 through 10. Number 3, Iliagnus Xembingii AGM, also known as thorny olive, wild olive, silverberry and silver thorn. Iliagnus can be deciduous or an evergreen large shrub or small tree. They are native to Asia and are often underrated. The evergreen varieties provide great year-round structure and although not showy, they work well as a shrub, small tree, as hedging or as a pleach hedge on stilts. There are some good variegated varieties such as Iliagnus X, Submacrophilii gilt edge AGM, but I prefer the metallic sea green leaves with silvery scaly underside of Iliagnus X Mbingii. Silver varieties such as Quicksilver is very popular, but this variety is deciduous. The metallic tones provide a great foil for other, perhaps more colourful garden plants. Although Iliagnus does produce flowers in August and September, they are indistinctive and often hard to spot, but they are beautifully scented, producing a heady aroma as you walk past, making it particularly good when planted near a bench or seating area. They are unfussy plants and one of the very toughest evergreens, tolerating exposed sites and even salty winds, so it is a reliable choice for coastal gardens. They also tolerate pollution and so a good choice too for city planting. Left to its own devices, Iliagnus can look quite wild and untidy, but it is well suited to clipping and works well as a hedge, especially a pleached hedge or clipped tree. It is very quick growing and so if planted as a hedge on stilts, plant about 1.6 metres apart and it will require clipping about four times a year. But this means that the more it is clipped, the quicker it joins up and a dense hedge can be achieved in less than four years. Iliagnus can grow to four metres in height and spread, which is 13 foot, but is easy to prune to a desirable size and shape. It grows best in full sun and well-drained soil, but will cope with a range of soil types, including dry soil. This tree copes with polluted or coastal sites where planting can be a challenge. When growing as a shrub, it is pruning group 9 and needs minimal pruning. However, if you want to keep it to a particular size and shape, then cut back after flowering and again as needed to maintain form. Roots best when under stress, for example in poor soil or in a pot. When planting, ensure that the plant sits in the same depth 
as it was previously, not too deep, allowing soil to accumulate around the base can be fatal for this tree. Hardiness H5, USDA hardiness 2 through 6. Number 4 on the list is Laurus nobilis, AGM, also known as Bay. A native of the Mediterranean, it was introduced to Britain in the 1560s, though its foliage may have come to these shores much earlier when Julius Caesar visited with a wreath of it on his head. It won the award of Garden Merit in 2002 and it is an adaptable and versatile evergreen which bears aromatic leaves which can be used as a herb in a variety of culinary dishes. It can be trimmed and pruned into various shapes such as pyramids and standards and looks fantastic as a pear flanking a front door. It is often considered as a half hardy plant when young but proves much tougher when mature and can combat British winters very well. However, the harsh winter of 2010 and 11 accounted for many casualties and indeed the two I had in our front door, one of them died, ruining my symmetry. Incidentally, the reason for this is that when growing in pots, the soil freezes in extreme winters, making it impossible for the plant to access moisture. Drought is the killer here, not hardiness. Bay trees make great structural plants and can be used to punctuate areas. They can be toporized into various shapes and the stems spiralled or plaited. Large bay trees produce many seedlings and my mother-in-law has a really large plant in her garden and she regularly digs up baby seedlings to give to me to grow on. These are some of the plants I'm growing and I'm experimenting trying to spiral the stem around a bamboo. To produce standard trees, just strip out the lower branches and the plants will very quickly bush up. Left unpruned, bay can reach 7.5 metres or over 24 foot, but it's very easy to prune to a desirable shape and size. Grow this tree in full sun or light shade, requires free draining soil, great for toporizing into all sorts of shapes and stems can also be plaited or spiral too for extra interest. Grow this tree in a sheltered position out of strong winds, it's hardier when growing in the ground and if growing in a pot, try and provide shelter in the winter months if possible. It's generally hardy to minus 5 degrees centigrade, 23 degrees Fahrenheit, but can withstand lower temperatures if in a sheltered position. Hardy zone 7, USDA hardiness, it through 10. Number 5 on my list is an Arbutus unido rubra AGM or strawberry tree as it's also called. This evergreen grows slowly into an attractive multi-stem tree or large shrub and makes an excellent ornamental feature. Native to the Mediterranean region and Western Europe, this is an interesting tree which provides year-round appeal. This tree will reach 8 metres in height and has an attractive rough shredding red-brown bark and mid-green leathery leaves. This rubra variety is an AGM recipient and has dark green leaves. Rosy pink urn-shaped flowers appear in autumn in panicles as the red strawberry-like fruits from the previous year's flowers ripen. The nectar from the flowers are great for attracting bees and butterflies and it provides shelter and fruit for the birds. The unido comes from the Latin phrase unum ido, meaning I eat one, likely referring to the fact that the fruits, though edible, are rather bland and mealy, hence leaving the consumer having no desire for another. Instead, it can be used for giving substance to pies or perhaps just left to the birds to enjoy. This tree will grow to four to eight metres or 13 to 26 feet in height and spread in 10 to 20 years. It grows best on loam, sand or chalk, avoid clay soils. Grows on any pH, acid, alkaline or neutral. Grow on well-drained soil in full sun. This tree is best grown in a south or west facing aspect in a sheltered spot. Its pruning group one requires minimal pruning. Hardy zone five, USDA hardiness seven through 10. Number six on my list is Eucalyptus gunnii azura, AGM, also known as cider gum. Eucalyptus gunnii is a native of the highlands of Tasmania and Australia and was introduced to the UK in the mid-1950s. A winner of the Ward of Garden Merit in both 2002 and 1950, this striking tree is also well suited to being grown as a multi-stem coppice specimen. A very well-known bushier eucalyptus and a very hardy one, this large broadly pyramidal tree has smooth silvery grey bark, peeling to reveal cream, olive green or pinkish brown patches. 
Eucalyptus gunnii azura is an exciting, relatively new variety and was discovered by the French Forestry Commission when they were assigned the task of finding a new eucalyptus varieties for timber production. This variety did not meet their needs but was recognised as a valuable garden asset, being slower growing with a compact bushy habit and garnered praise for its ornamental qualities and receiving an AGM. All eucalyptus have aromatic evergreen foliage. When mature, leaves are lance-shaped and greyish blue-green, but juvenile young leaves are grey-green and glaucous and more rounded and silvery. For those florists amongst you, the foliage is particularly good to complement cut flower arrangements and dries well. As a point of interest, grab hold of the leaves of a eucalyptus on a hot summer's day and you will immediately notice how cold they are. They are nature's air conditioning units. Interestingly, eucalyptus does not have a dormancy period and carries on growing very slowly even in the winter months. Small, white, fragrant flowers are produced on mature plants, followed by woody, rounded, olive green fruit. This will grow to 4 to 8 metres, 13 to 26 foot in height, with a spread of 2.5 to 4 metres or 8 foot, 13 feet. Grow in a south or west facing sheltered site. Grow in moist but well-drained soil. Grow in dapple shade or full sun. Prefers acidic or neutral soil types. This tree will grow on clay, sand or loam, but it prefers well-drained, light, sandy soil. Prune back hard annually in late winter or early spring to maintain its small habit and juvenile foliage. Hardiness H5, USDA hardiness 7 through 10. We were considering purchasing an olive tree to give our seating area a Mediterranean feel, but in recent years it is extremely risky buying an olive as they are host plants for Xyella, a harmful disease which is lethal to oaks, maples and other plants. For this reason, the RHS have banned their use in all of their RHS events, including Chelsea. And so to prevent the spread of this disease, it is the responsibility of gardeners to do our bit to reduce the spread of this plant killing disease in the UK by not buying such plants. However, olives add a valuable touch of the Mediterranean to our gardens and so the next tree captures the Mediterranean look without the risks and has the advantage of being much easier to grow in our climate. Next on my list is Quercus ilex or home oak um, and I'm here in the, what is the old vegetable patch where I'm just bringing on these trees. They're actually getting rather big and I do need to do something with them but I just bought them as small trees and they've been in here now a couple of years and you can see um, it's taller than me now so it's um, it's um, certainly over six foot tall now, so this is a lovely tree. Quercus ilex, AGM, also known as home oak, evergreen oak or holly oak, is a naturally large evergreen tree. It responds well to formative pruning and clipping, so it can be used to create hedging or statement structural trees in pots. Like the olive, it comes from the Mediterranean, but has been growing in Britain since the 1500s and is now thought to be native of Southern Ireland. The timber is hard and long lasting and used for joinery, vine props or for charcoal. It won the award of Garden Merit in 2002 and is surely one of the most majestic of evergreen trees growing in the UK. They seem to be more intensely silver when growing on the coast and can quickly be mistaken for olives when the tree is juvenile. If left to its own devices, it forms a large tree with a densely rounded habit. It is a popular ornamental tree that is widely cultivated in gardens and parks around the world and provides good evergreen structure in winter months. This is a slow growing tree that can reach heights of up to 100 feet and has a dense rounded canopy. It has dark green leathery leaves with spiny margins and small acorn like fruits that are an important food source for wildlife. The home oak is known for its ability to tolerate a wide range of growing conditions including drought, heat and salty soil. It also has the benefit of interesting black, finely cracked bark with twigs that are slender and covered with light brown felt-like hairs. Its Mediterranean look comes from its evergreen glossy leaves which are whitish beneath. The leaves are oval with young leaves being spiny like holly but older leaves have a smooth edge. It has small elongated yellow catkins with male and female flowers hanging off the tree. After pollination by wing, female flowers develop into acorns, which are smaller than those of the English oak. A tough tree, it can tolerate salt spray, so it can be used as a windbreak in coastal gardens, and it can also tolerate air pollution well, making it suitable for city planting. Although naturally a very big tree, the home oak is well suited to pruning and shaping to desired size and height. It also makes a really good tree for a pleached hedge on stilts. 
Naturally, this is a big tree and will grow higher than 12 metres or 39 feet and wider than 8 metres or 26 feet in 20 to 50 years, if not cut, but it can be pruned to a desirable size and shape. Quercus ilex grows in chalk, clay, loam or sand and can tolerate any pH, plant in well-draining soil in full sun. When mature, this tree can tolerate exposed or sheltered sites, but protect from extreme cold and wind, especially when immature. Hardiness H4, USDA hardiness 7 through 10. And next on my list is yew, and we have got lots of yew in this garden. We've got it growing primarily as hedging, but you can also grow it as um, statement trees, which can be toperized and used as to punctuate different parts of the garden. Taxus baccata, AGM, also known as English yew or European yew, is an evergreen tree native to Europe and Western Asia. It is a popular ornamental tree that is widely cultivated in gardens and parks around the world and provides excellent evergreen structure in the winter garden. The English yew is a slow growing tree that can reach heights of up to 40 feet and has a narrow pyramidal shape. It has dark green glossy needle like leaves and small red berries that are toxic to humans and most animals. Despite its toxic berries, the English yew is often used in landscaping and as a hedge plant due to its ability to tolerate shearing and pruning. Taxus baccata is best used in a garden setting to create topiary shapes and hedging and can be pruned into all sorts of topiary shapes. If you want your yew to look tall and slim, then go for Taxus baccata fastigiata or Irish yew, which will form this large column of green which can be used to punctuate the area. Yew is a long-lived plant and is resistant to pests and diseases. It provides excellent shelter and food for wildlife and it grows incredibly quickly when you're growing it to the desired height. But once you cut the main stem, then it becomes a slow growing head. So it's actually ideal because it's quite low maintenance in the long run. Yew will grow higher than 12 metres or 39 feet and wider than 8 metres, 26 feet in 20 to 50 years, if not cut, but it can be pruned to a desirable size and shape. Yew grows best in well-draining soil in full sun or partial shade. It can grow in any soil type, sand, loam, chalk or clay, but the soil must be free draining, so add grit if planting in clay. It grows in any aspect, north, south, east or west, and can tolerate exposed or sheltered sites. Prune in late winter or early spring to maintain shape and encourage new growth. Hardiness H4, USDA hardiness 7 through 10. Next on my list is Ilex aquifolium or common holly. Ilex aquifolium AGM, also known as common holly, is a large evergreen tree, slow growing when young with dark glossy green, usually strongly spiny leaves. Small white flowers in spring are followed by red berries in pollinated female plants. One of the most evocative and best loved of all trees, the common holly is beautiful in its simplicity and brings cheer in the darkest time of the year. It is very tolerant of shade and prefers well-drained soil. This native of Britain is a small conical evergreen tree which provides year-round interest. There are more than 500 species of holly and so it's worth investigating which is the perfect one for a specific situation. Hollies make excellent candidates for hedging or topiary, a practice that dates back centuries. Traditional hedging such as Ilex aquifolium elegantissima and Ilex ex ultra clarensis golden king AGM can be clipped into cones, pyramids and balls, while Ilex craniata is ideal for contemporary styles such as cloud pruning. Hollies also make excellent specimen trees. For larger gardens, try pyramidal Ilex ex Cohiana, chestnut leaf, AGM, and the broadly cumular Ilex X Ultra Clearensis, Cameliofolia, AGM, are both quick growers and they fruit dependably. For smaller gardens, try Ilex X Aquiperennii, Dragon Lady, or Mejic, AGM, and Ilex Aquifolium Siberia, Limpsy. All are ideal and form narrow cones with dependable fruit. Hollies are great garden all-rounders offering year-round structure, dazzling seasonal fruit displays and excellent evergreen foliage with a wide range of colour variations. Interestingly, holly trees only retain their spiky leaves within the first 10 feet of height. After this point, it suffers no predation and so has no need for the thorny defences. Holly can grow to 12 metres or 39 feet plus in height and 4 to 8 metres 
13 to 26 feet in spread in 20 to 50 years, but can be clipped to shape. It will grow on any soil type and in any pH. It likes moist but well-drained soil and can grow in full sun or partial shade. Grow in a south, east or west facing site, but avoid north facing site. It can tolerate exposed or sheltered sites. Pruning group one, trim in early spring. Hardy H5, USDA hardiness seven through 10. And finally, we've come to number 10. And this one is probably the most um, show stopping and perhaps most magnificent tree on the list. It's Magnolia grandiflora exmouth, which is an AGM awarded tree, also known as evergreen magnolia or bull bay. This is a large rounded evergreen shrub or small tree with glossy dark green leathery oblong leaves, often a rusty colour underneath. Magnolia grandiflora is native to the southwestern United States. It provides good architectural form all year round, but in late summer and autumn, it produces a magnificent display of highly fragrant citrus scented cup shaped cream flowers up to 25 centimetres across. This tree can grow to 12 metres, 39 feet plus in height and 8 metres, 26 feet in spread in 20 to 30 years, but it can be clipped to shape. It can be grown as a tree or against a wall. If grown as a tree, grow in a sheltered spot, but Exmouth is hardier than others. Grow on chalk, clay, sand or loam. Prefers moist but well-drained soil. pH acid, alkaline or neutral. Prefers sun but tolerates partial shade. Grow in a south, west or east facing site. Avoid north facing. It can be slow to establish in the UK. Pruning group 1, prune in spring as growth begins, but pruning group 13 if growing against a wall. Can be grown as a pleached hedge on stilts, but this is riskier than tougher, hardier plants. Consider your exposure carefully as this could be an expensive mistake. Hardiness H5, USDA hardiness 7 through 10. So there are lots of evergreen trees to choose from and these are just some of the ones that really add structure to a winter garden and give you that interest all year round. Thanks very much for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.